so I'm Laurent Brochet from uh, Farmboy Labs. Uh, to cut the suspense short, uh, as uh, Roman already said, uh, our company is building a cable robot for agriculture. So uh, cable robot is a robot suspended from cable over farmlands, uh, like modern camera in, uh, in football stadiums. Uh, each cable bolt can uh, dive down to, uh, to the ground and tilt, seed, weed, and harvest crop in a way that is both uh, organic and economical. The point is to automate the ground work in farms and bring down their running, their running costs uh, while uh, bettering the output. So, uh, first, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the problem we tackle. Uh, then, we, sorry, then what's uh, proposed uh, out there, uh, as of now, as a first solution. Uh, obviously, I'm going to talk about uh, cable bot, right? <laughs> and uh, also, what the advantages of uh, cable bots and uh, what, uh, what are the, the challenges for agricultural work. I'll finish then by uh, telling you a bit about what we are doing and uh, what we are uh, hoping uh, you can uh, can provide, basically. <laughs> okay, so not long ago, I met Frank. Uh, Frank keeps having problems, basically. Uh, nowadays, he's uh, an organic uh, open field farmer, and uh, before that, he was uh, in conventional farming. So when he was in conventional farming, he practiced uh, with the same tools and uh, methods uh, his father did. But uh, as with all farm farmers I uh, met, he has a problem that equipment is more and more expensive and the uh, weeds are more and more resistant to uh, cocktails of uh, herbicides that are uh, <laughs> more and more exotic. Uh, also, there is a growing uh, public opposition uh, because of uh, climate change and uh, glyphosate and stuff like that. So he went fully organic then. Uh, before, before going organic, he, uh, he had a long preparation time by uh, choosing uh, the right species of crop uh, he wanted that are uh, disease resistant, but uh, also that brings a uh, lower yield. Uh, so now we spend a lot of time weeding, <laughs> most, uh, most notably, and uh, for better rentability of his hard work, he would have liked to, to put some, uh, some carrots in his rotation, but uh, carrots are uh, even worse in the weeding aspect of it, and uh, they will need to be done by hand. Uh, but uh, because of that, he, he renounced uh, doing carrots in his rotation. So what tools are there? Uh, okay, sorry, I forgot to change the slide. Uh, so what tools are there? Uh, I'm going to, to focus on weeding, on weeding only because it's like the main uh, main problem. But uh, Robert is not doing just weeding. Well, first, uh, the first tool of uh, farmers of agriculture is uh, the rotation of the culture. But uh, in this rotation, there are cultures that are uh, pretty much aimed at uh, weeding the, the fields, but they are uh, low priced. So that's the first problem. And um, there are the, the cost of, uh, of the, the, the equipment, as I said, but uh, this equipment basically uh, heavy tractors that, are, uh, that allows to track some uh, tools like the plow, the combarrow, or the optical row. And then, they, because we are here at FERA, there are the wheeled robots and the flying drones, uh, which, uh, which works. But uh, in uh, large fields, like uh, in large cultures such as Frank's, the autonomy, uh, poor autonomy, sorry, and uh, load capacity is, uh, is a problem. So that's what existing technology does. So cable bots. How about a new tool? A radically different. For those of you that, uh, that do not watch uh, football uh, over the television, uh, here is a cable robot. Uh, basically, that's just a platform controlled and, uh, by at least three cables, sorry. Uh, and these cables drives uh, the motion and action of the platform. So on the platform, you put the tool and uh, it executes uh, what you need to do. So the strong suit of, uh, of this uh, of, of cable bot is that over large surfaces, it, ca it can carry uh, and operate under high loads and uh, with no time limits because the power is not on the platform but on the mass. Uh, it can be very fast, and uh, if with the precision of fixed standing robotics, meaning millimetric. Uh, yes. In the cable bot European project, we put into evidence uh, the advantages, but also the operational limits of such robots. So there is uh, one of the media results of uh, the cable bot project. Um, 
So I also worked on uh, the marionette prototypes in, in, at INRIA and uh, also one in, uh, in industry, but that's a confidential one. And um, on a configuration generator uh, for, to get the configuration of such robot to execute tasks. And uh, also in certified interference library. So you can see there that uh, it's some load already. And you can do precise uh, action because it uh, does assembly. So I, I don't uh, show the full video here, but you can go on, uh, on YouTube and find that. Um, so such robots. Okay. I have a problem with the pictures. <laughs> such robots, because it scales so well, are particularly economical, economical and fast for economic application. Obviously, no soil compaction here because it doesn't touch the soil. No autonomy issues because uh, it does not embark power. Um, obviously, uh, you don't care about losing GPS because you don't have GPS and you don't need GPS, you just fix robots. Um, and because it's so precise and will consider the plant one by one, uh, there is no loss of crops which is one of the defect of uh, traditional uh, tools like the combaro and the plow, stuff like that. So obviously that's not a done deal yet. Uh, the biggest challenge that we see are first that we like to put four masts that are up to 50 meters high uh, per landlot. Uh, secondly, uh, while we don't have uh, agronomical expertise uh, in our midst between my partner and I, and uh, we'll need some help on the analysis and the plant recognition. Also, farmers told us that they like to have the, um, the seed phase and the harvest phase done in one day. And when you do the seeding and the harvest one by one, and you do that for wheat, we, <laughs> we have millions of plants per hectare, it's quite a challenge. And besides breeding, we like uh, also organic or mechanical solution for pesticide and fungicide. And uh, finally, the tool uh, equipping the robot, like for the, the till, for tilling or, um, or owing or stuff like that, will undergo wear and damages, and uh, they need to be considered as uh, consumable, which must be distributed. Then. So what uh, we are doing nowadays uh, is to find seed funds for R&D uh, with uh, VCs on one part and with grants like uh, Esmera on the other side. And uh, we set up industrial uh, and technological partnerships. We also have a detailed uh, technological roadmap and a higher level roadmap here. And uh, actually, the, the real, real reason that I'm here, again, some problem with the picture, uh, that I'm here today is that uh, I'm looking for you, everybody. Um, I'm looking for partnerships with uh, research, sorry, with uh, researchers to make the robot better, to, uh, to fill in the technological uh, bricks I, I told you just earlier, for industrial partners also to, for, to scale it up, and obviously to farmers to test the prototype and uh, to give feedback. So if you are interested with uh, technology, and I hope you are by now, then please, us, please let us know. Um, we have uh, these letters that uh, you can fill out that uh, will make it easier for us to work with you and to raise funds. And uh, uh, we also have it on the on internet, on our website, on the QR code here. So please come see me. Uh, I'd love to talk to, with you, or even better, just raise your hand and uh, I'll ask you, uh, I'll ask some question. I'll ask an answer, sorry. Thank you. I guess you have uh, some questions about this uh, new point of view about robotics uh, for agriculture. Uh, for agricultural uh, work, I don't have a prototype. As I was saying, I'm trying to raise funds to make one. But uh, we did, uh, I did, sorry, in my previous life, a lot of prototypes on the actual product, actually. Uh, not uh, on, on field, actually. Uh, well. And uh, in the detailed roadmap that we have, we, we actually have several prototype uh, planned, uh, basically every two months, and uh, tests with Arvalis that are already planned with the DG Farm from Arvalis. Uh, I'm quite sure there is a limit, yeah. <laughs> I just don't know that. But the uh, one I'm uh, pre-dimensioning right now is about 100 hectares. You say 100 hectares? 
one kilometer by one kilometer. There is so big cable boat uh, in the industry, uh, one kilometer per one kilometer. There is no uh, such a big uh, robot in the industry because uh, the industry does not know what to do with such cable robots. The only real application of cable boats nowadays are the camera stadiums, the stadiums camera, sorry, and uh, some uh, wind tunnels application uh, to orient the models in the wind tunnels, but they are quite small scale. And um, actually, most of the commercially operated cable bot, meaning the stadium's camera, are um, quite uh, low tech in the control because it does not consider uh, the full uh, behavior of the cables. And uh, well, most notably, Jean-Pierre Marlet uh, uh, is working on that and uh, still is working on that because there is always work to be done on there. But uh, we can do a lot better than we could uh, like 40 years from now, before. Sorry. Yes. I'm wondering how much it's complicated to, to, to design this system. Is, uh, is there a need for, uh, for some changes in the field or it's easy to... to okay, so on the operational uh, aspect then. Uh, you can consider that there is changes in the field because you basically you need some foundation there. You cannot just... Uh, but some mass that holds up by magic. <laughs> the foundation, however, are not like a concrete uh, foundation into the soil or whatever. They're just like uh, steel screws, like big scree, uh, steel screw that are screwed into the soil and that can be removed. And uh, basically, the farmers, uh, like year after year, modify their, the, the shape of their uh, fields. So you need to be able to remove that and displace that f by a few meters and to put that back in. Was a question? Yeah? I um, was wondering about the wind and the wind dust. Yeah. Such a, uh, basically, the, the wind is not a, a fast phenomena, uh, except if you have a tempest uh, or something like that. But you can, uh, you can put that back into uh, the control by feed forward. Uh, you just measure that and uh, control that uh, in feed forward. A last question? Uh, what about the energy consumption? Yes. Uh, when you do agricultural work, you need a lot of power, obviously. However, uh, because uh, generally there is not an electrical outlet uh, in the fields, <laughs> we, uh, we aimed at uh, a power uh, autonomous solution. And we have uh, small uh, wind turbines on top of each mast because we already have the mast, so we just put some wind turbine on that. <laughs> and we have yeah, <laughs> and we have uh, winches that are autonomously independent uh, in the term of power. Okay, and so the prototype will be uh, shown in uh, 2020? Yes, uh, if, uh, if we find funds, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. uh, to, to be the prototype, you need uh, our help and uh, you need that we uh, fill up a pole that is... Yeah, ideally, for farmers that do have an exploitation, uh, fill up an, um, a letter with me. It's not uh, with any engagement. It's just uh, for me to show investors that uh, I'm not uh, thinking that there are a market when there is none. And uh, just for people, uh, for farmers that think that may be interesting for them uh, in the future, come see me. We can uh, discuss or go to the website and we have uh, like an online uh, Google form uh, stuff.